Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for the organizers' invitation, and uh, I'm very happy here to give an introduction to our space links. Um, to start this, uh, let's just consider an, an component link L inside the three manifold S3. So for this link, we can ask a lot of questions, uh, a lot of natural questions. For example, we can ask, like what do we ask for the knot? We can ask the three board genus or four board genus of the link. Um, I haven't said clearly about the definition for this G3L or G4L, but this is very similar to the case of the knot. You can ask whether the, you can find a cipher surface with boundary of the link in S3, or you can find a surface embedded in, inside B4 with boundary L. And among all these candidates, you want to find the minimal genus one. But let's, let me maybe expand this question more clear. Instead of saying G3L, actually we can talk about a more general concept, which is related to the certain norm. And uh, the certain norm is a norm defined in the link complement S3 minus L. And in order to consider this certain norm, uh, we need to give a second relative homology class H inside this relative homology. And uh, you, you can use some duality to identify the second relative homology to Zn. And n is the number, n is the number of n is the number of component of the link. So for any such homology class H, you can find an embedded compact surface with boundary F such that F represents this homology class H. So among all the surface F, we can ask what is the minimal genus one. But uh, to be more precise, we actually are talking about the complexity of a surface. The complexity of a compact oriented surface with uh, M component and the surface maybe has boundary is defined as chi minus F which is defined as the sum of all minors or the characteristic of the component where you need to take the component of this negative or the characteristic. So you basically ignore the disk component or sphere component when you consider the complexity of a surface. So now the question is actually given a homology class H, you want to find, you want to find the surface F representing H with the minimal complexity, which actually is related to the question where the genus is also minimal. So this complexity gives us a function from the second relative homology class to Z, where the, you define as S X H equals to, um, equals to the complexity of all the surface representing the class H. And then Thurston proved like you can extend this function x to define over r in a sense r. This is not only a function, but actually it's a semi-norm. And the people usually call it a Thurston norm. So for example, if we have the following link, this is a two component link consists of the component L1 and L2. And then you have K full twist here and K full twist there. So actually you can see like this two components are both on knots. This link we denoted as uh, the notation here with a parameter k is a family of two bridge link. K goes, uh, k is greater or equals to one. When k equals to one, this is actually the white hair link. So uh, we can identify the second relative homology class as z squared. And then if we compute the certain norm at the zero one direction or one zero direction, they're both two k minus one. What does this mean? It actually means like if you correspond in this uh, vector zero one as the link component L2, it actually means a cipher surface inside S3 with boundary O2 uh, with the minimal OLA characteristic as, with the maximal OLA characteristic as one minus two K. And with the minimal complexity, which is two K minus one. So, this is uh, the, the same I want to say about the th three board genus of L or the certain norm. To go to the four board genus G4L, uh, we can actually do different things. For example, the most natural thing is like you can ask the surface sit inside B4 and with the boundary, which is the link L, and we can consider the minimal genus of such surface. This is the analog of the knot case. 
But we can also do another kind of definition of the four-ball genus. For example, if you assume your link has pairwise linking number zero, which means like actually you can find pairwise disjoint surface inside a B4 bounded by each component. Why is that? It's very simply to observe from this picture. You see like each component Li origin, they bound a cipher surface, sigma one prime or sigma two prime or sigma n prime, etc., in the three sphere S3, and then you push them into B4. So this cipher, cipher surface, now they will intersect transversely at pairwise uh, as a pairs of crossings where one crossing is positive and one crossing is negative. Because the linking number is zero, so this positive crossing and negative crossing will appear in pairs. So for each pair of this crossing, we can add a two to get rid of this pair of crossings in sacrifice of increasing the genus. And by doing this procedure, you can, you can finally find all pairwise disjoint surface sigma i with boundary Li inside B4. So you can ask the strong four-ball genus, which is defined as the sum of all gi, where gi is the genus of the P sigma i. Well, sigma one, sigma two is the disjoint collection of surface sitting inside B4 with boundary L. So you have a different flavors of finding the four ball genus. And actually we can compare the strong four ball genus and a weak four ball genus. They can be very large usually because if you consider a not K with the split union of its mirror K4, then you see actually this is um, this bounds an annulus in B4. So G4 weak is just a zero, but G4 strong can be arbitrary large, depends on the not K. And uh, for, the, for the example we have shown before, this two bridge link family, you see like G4 strong of this link is just the K, depends on the parameter uh, K here. But for the weak, weak four ball genus, uh, I don't know the answer yet, but I think the answer should be K or K minus one. Actually, this two four ball genus for such two family of two bridge link, they should be the same. But we may won't talk about a lot of details here in this talk because just the, the time, because the time limit. And the second question you can ask about this link is whether the link is fibered or not, meaning the link complement can be written as a surface uh, bundle over S1. Or the third question you can ask is a related cobordism question, saying, uh, for example, in the not case, you have not K1 and not K2 sitting inside S3, and you want to see a cobordism surface inside S3 cross I bounded with these two components. So there may be some genus on this surface. And you can ask what's the minimal genus for such, for such a cobordism surface. This has been done by uh, Marco Chilari, uh, Bernard, and some other people by using different techniques. And then you can generalize these questions to links very naturally. However, for links, you may have uh, link one, L1, and link L2. They don't necessarily to have the same number of components. Then in this case, you may appear some cobordism surface with uh, two more with two boundary components on one side and the other one boundary component on the other side. Then you can ask the similar question. Or you can restrict your cobordism surface, which means like each surface component must have the same number of components on L1 and on L2. That's also depends on flavor, but you can also ask the several questions relating to this setting. And the, the last question is like, as we know, every three manifold can be obtained from surgeries of links in S3, like this one. So you can ask what the surgery can tell us about the link or what the link can tell us about the surgery. For example, for the not case, if we know that the surgery on K equals to S3 for some rational, um, for some rational surgeries, then you know K actually must be the unknot. Or uh, if we know like if there is some rational surgeries on K which give you the point of homotic sphere, then K must either be the right hand trifoil with D equals to one or the left hand trifoil if either D equals to minus one. 
So this is a very famous um, result given by Gigini using the Hegel flow homology. So we haven't talked about the definition of Hegel flow homology, but this is um, a very famous result. So you can ask the similar result to links, saying now if I have D1, D2 rational surgeries along this link, which give you S3 or point in the homology sphere, then what can we know about the, the, the link L? Usually it's a very hard question, but like if we add an assumption saying L is Brownian, means every proper sublink is an unlink, then we can conclude L is the unlink if the surgery is S3. We also have the corresponding answer for point cloud homosphere, but um, I will I, I won't talk I won't talk the details in here. So uh, we have some background, and maybe now is a good time for us to review simply review the Hegel flow homology, because uh, this is the key tool to solve to solve all these questions. So the Hegel flow homology is a package. is a package gives you a lot of invariance of three manifolds or the links in the three manifold defined by Oshiva and Zabu. The manifold Uli is a closed oriented clo connective three manifold M, and then Oshiva and Zabu connected a chain complex CF minors of M to this three manifold. Uh, and this chain complex will give us some homology, which we call HF minors of M. So maybe uh, we don't have a lot of time to go to the de de definition of this chain complex and homology, but it's very important to remember this chain complex is an FU module where U is a form of variable, and then the homology is naturally also an FU module. For example, if we have the three manifold is this S3, then you can compute uh, the homology HF minors of S3 is just generated by one element as an FU module. Mm -hmm. So now what, what does the link give us to, um, to this, to this uh, what does the link play, a, what role does this link play in this Hegel flow homology? Now if we have a link in S3, so what does this link do? This link usually actually um, give us some filtration on the chain complex. It's there due to the work of Osher and Zabo saying like, now the each link component Li will induce a filtration on the chain complex CF minors of S3. So now we not only have a chain complex CF minors S3, but actually we have a filtered chain complex, the filtration induced by L. If your L has N components, then you have N filtration levels. So this filtered chain complex will also give us some invariance relating to this link. And the, the, the one, uh, the, the invariant we care most or we are using the most is so-called H function. And the, this H function, first of all, it is a link invariant. And where it is defined? It is defined over an N-dimensional lattice. So you can simply regard this n-dimensional lattice as Zn, but usually you need to shift by half of the linking number over two. So it's either Zn or Zn plus one half, depending on the linking number. For simplicity, you can just regard this n-dimensional lattice as Zn. So this H function is this lattice defined, uh, is defined over this lattice to some positive integers. So for example, if we have a not k, then this uh, h function is defined over z to z, actually z uh, positive integers. And for example, if we have on not, then the h function will take the value as shown below. This is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, et cetera. And if it's the right-hand tree for you, then it's almost the same as the on not, but you need to replace this 0 by 1, 1, 2, 3, Zero, zero, zero. So now if we have a two component link, say the white hand link, then your H function is defined over Z2 and then goes to Z. So the H function is kind of denoted by the red, uh, red numbers in the picture, as you can see. And still for the time reason, we won't go to the definition for the H function, but we want you to have a feeling of this H function by seeing some examples. So now what, uh, so now I want to state the results um, 
using the Hegel flow homology to solve the questions we proposed at the very beginning. It turns out like for all the questions we have asked at the very beginning, the Hegel flow homology uh, provides the tool to solve them or partly solve them. So first, uh, for example, this G3 or G4, uh, we will concentrate on it. So I will show you the result in a minute and leave it to leave it then. But the second one, there's a famous theorem by Ni Yi who proved like the Hegel flow homology can detect whether a link is fibered or not. And for the Cobalism question, there's also some related work by using the invariants like such as the H invariant or the V invariant or the tau to give a bounds of this genus. Um, yeah, and also for the for the for question four, but for re, but we will concentrate on the first question G three and G four. For G three, which is related to the first known question. Uh, this is a theorem proved by Auschwitz and Zabel saying this link flow complex means the theater chain complex will determine the Thurston norm. And then uh, for this, so this gives G3L. And then for G4L, uh, uh, we have a theorem saying like if you have a link with pairwise linking number, and also you suppose like Li bounds pairwise disjoint surface sigma i with genus gi, then we have these following inequalities which give you a bounds of this genus in terms of the h function. So you can see like the left hand side is the h function of the link. So this is the h function of this unlink. So this is really a constant. And the right hand side uh, is a function involving the genus gi. So this function is FGISI is defined as follows. So FGISI is defined as um, the ceiling of GI minus SI over two if SI is smaller or equals to GI. Otherwise it equals to zero. So the right hand side really just involves the genus of uh, the surface. 